Praise the Lord. For the first service of the year, I welcome everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. New year, new blessing. Amen. New year, new life. Amen. New strength. Amen. New power. A new progress in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Our children, I welcome you to the new year. Amen. Young people, youths, I welcome you to this new year. Amen. And young adults and young professionals, you are welcome to the new year in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, adults like me. I said adults like me, fathers, mothers, pastors, ministers, families, I welcome you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> this will be a new year for everyone, for me, for you, and for everyone in Jesus' name. For all our churches everywhere, every region, every state, every nation in the continent and beyond the continent of Africa, I welcome everyone to a brand new year in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. We know that this year, according to your promise, according to our faith, will be really new and fresh for everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. All the promises that have missed us in the past, this is the year of achievement. Amen. The year of possession and the year of fulfillment in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. You have started with us already from the very first of the month and the first of this year. Lord, we pray you will continue with every one of us in Jesus' name. In front, at the back, around, above, beneath, you will always be present and powerful for every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Bless your people today and help us to remain in the blessing of the Lord for the rest of the year, even beyond this year, if Jesus tarries in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. We're coming to Numbers chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 14. And they found Numbers chapter 8, verse 14. Today we're looking at uh, the Levites and we're looking at the Christians, the believers, the Christ like Levites of today. Those days in Israel, they are the Levites. Those days in Israel, they are the people that were committed, consecrated, set apart, and separated, severed from the world, totally consecrated unto the Lord. But now, the Levites are gone not only that, who are not, uh, you know, the nation of Israel. We are the body of Christ. We are the Christians. We are the congregation of the Lord, the people that remain committed committed to the Lord and co converted to the Lord and consecrated to the Lord want to learn what the Bible has to say for every one of us that have been called to the Lord and that are cleaving unto the Lord we're looking at the sure sealed covenant for present day Christ-like Levites Levites yes separated years giving to the lord yet but were sealed with a covenant as present day christian committed consecrated christ-like levites and in numbers chapter 8 reading from verse 14 thus shalt thou separate 
the Levites from among the children of Israel. And the Levite shall be mine. The Lord took the Levites unto himself. And he said, the Levite shall be mine. Day and night, week and month, all the years they were consecrated, separated as Levites. The Levite shall be mine. Watch an example. Watch a model. Watch a pattern for the believers. The so are called to repentance and we have repented. We are called by the Redeemer. We have been redeemed. We are called out of sin unto salvation and we have been saved. And when he calls us like that and we respond to the call, he separates us from the world. He separates us from sin. He separates us from evil. And we are totally committed unto the Lord. Thou shalt separate the Levites from among the children of Israel and the Levites shall be mine. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, after that, shall the Levites go in after they are separated to the Lord, after they are totally given to the Lord, severed from the world, separated from the world, and separated from their sin. It's after that separation, after that salvation, that now they go in to do the service of of the Lord of the tabernacle of the congregation and thou shalt cleanse them they could not serve the Lord and none of us can serve the Lord in defilement in sin in evil we have to be cleansed by the Lord washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb it says they shall cleanse them and offer them the people offered them to God because they are an offering unto the Lord. As we look at the Levites and we look at ourselves in this new year and we look at the fact that we are separated from the world and separated from sin and separated unto the Lord, converted and cleansed and consecrated unto the Lord. We need to learn how do I give myself to the Lord this year? Completely, totally, without reservation. It tells us in Nehemiah chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 38, Nehemiah chapter 9, we're looking at verse 38. It says, and because of all these, we make a sure covenant and write each and our princes and the Levites and the priests seal unto it. The Levites and the priests the seal unto the covenant. The covenant of separation from the world unto the Lord. The covenant of total, complete, or reserved separation from everything defiling and were separated unto the Lord. It's a covenant and for those of us who are present day, Christ-like living, that's what we need to take care of to understand that we're sealed and we're separated totally unto the Lord. In Nehemiah chapter 13, I'm reading here from verse 29. It says, remember them, O my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites here in Nehemiah was telling the Lord that you know that the Levites that should be pure and preserved, committed and consecrated unto the Lord, they defiled the covenant of the priesthood. They defiled the covenant of the Levites. Then he says in verse 30, in verse 30 he says, Thus cleansed I them to be useful to the Lord again and to be profitable in the kingdom of God again. Although they were defiled, Nehemiah said, I cleanse them. We need cleansing. We need total washing by the blood of the Lamb. And we need cleansing that will make us fit and make us acceptable in the sight of the Lord as we present ourselves at the present day, Christ-like Levites in covenant with the Lord. Look at verse 30. It says, Thus I cleanse them from 
all strangers and appointed the wards of the priests and of the Levites, everyone in his business. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, we're reading from verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Here is the seal. Here is the sh a surety. Here is the very certainty and the confirmation that were Levites unto the Lord, Christ like Levites unto the Lord, committed to the Lord, giving to the Lord, totally abandoned unto the Lord, absolutely surrendered unto the Lord. He says, This is the seal that the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone, everyone, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Verse 21. In verse 21, it says, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work we're talking about the sure sealed covenant we're present day christ-like levites and there are three things we're looking at in the message today number one is the covenant with consecrated levites and converted Christians. Number two, the cleansing of committed Levites and crucified Christians. Number three, our consistency with Christ-like loyalty and commendable cooperation. Look at number one. Number one is the covenant with consecrated Levites and converted Christians. The, the covenant we have is like the covenant of those Levites. The covenant the Lord has brought us to already, if we're Christians, if we're converted, if we're children of God, is a covenant like those, uh, like those Levites that came out voluntarily by themselves and by decision, a decisive act that they came to the Lord. In the same way we're taking that decisive act and we have come to the Lord and we want to remain like that converted unto the Lord in Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 38 and because of all this we make a sure covenant as you come to the Lord you understand you make a covenant a covenant that you abide in a covenant you are assured of, a covenant that you commit yourself to, and it's not coming in and going out, coming in and going out. It's like, you know, the marriage covenant that he is the bridegroom and we are the bride. And a day comes in our lives when we totally, completely, instantaneously dedicate ourselves unto the Lord in covenant. And we say, I belong to him and to him alone. I'm not you know, coming out and going in and going out. We're totally committed unto the Lord. And this is the covenant he wants us to understand. It's a sure covenant and we write it, and our princes and the Levites and the priests seal unto it. And we're dividing this to three subtitles. Look at number one is the call of the Levites out of the congregation. Number two is the consecration of Levites against corruption, contamination. And number three, the conservation of the Levites in constant conviction, constant conviction, always carrying about, I belong to the Lord, I'm separated unto the Lord, the constant conviction, I'm not like them, I'm not like the world, but I belong specially unto the Lord, spiritually unto the Lord, the conservation of the Levites in constant conviction. Look at number one, number one, the calling of Levites out of 
the congregation in Exodus chapter 32 in Exodus chapter 32 something here had happened Moses had been called by the Lord to come to the mountain to receive the law of God for the children of Israel and for the for humanity because all those commandments they are repeated in the New Testament in New Covenant it is for everyone and while Moses was up there in the presence of the Lord the children of Israel their leaders came to Aaron and he said up oh, because God's that will go before us for as for this Moses, we don't know well, what not, we know not what has become of him. And Aaron, in his backsliding heart, backsliding attitude, backsliding disposition, it is backsliding weakness. He said, break up the earrings that you have. And he made a God for them and they started worshipping the idol. And uh, they said, these be thy God, so Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And God saw it and God was grieved. And God was unhappy with them and he told Moses go down to your people because they have deviated they have gone away far from me and I will destroy them and make you a great nation and Moses began to pray for them saying oh Lord don't do that the Egyptians and the Gentiles will think you don't have the power to take them to the land that's why you destroy them and God had answered the prayer and uh, Moses came down and said look at what you have done he needed to call the whole nation back to the Lord that's why we read now in Exodus chapter 32 verse 25 and when Moses saw that the people were naked for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies verse 26 in verse 26 then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said who is on the Lord's side let him come unto me this was the call that brought the Levites out of the congregation of sinners the congregation of backsliders the congregation of idol worshippers the congregation of evil doers Moses like an evangelist Moses the man of God he called on the people he said the choice is yours now You've gone away from the Lord and you have uh, backslidden and gone into sin. But whosoever will may still come. Is that not what the evangelist tells us? Whosoever will may come and take the water of life freely. Whosoever will may come to Christ, our Savior, our Lord. Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. That's what the Lord wants us to do. If you have not done that, a time comes in your life, a day comes in your life, when you respond to the call of the Lord, who is on the Lord's side, is not willing that any should perish. He wants all to come to repentance and when you say I know what the Lord wants he wants conversion he wants salvation he wants repentance for me for everyone and then you make up your mind and you come out of sin and you say I'll be on the Lord's side I come and when you come like that he will receive you I said they will receive you. If you have not come, you must know. The Levites knew the day. They knew the hour. They knew the time. They came to the Lord. And it was an instantaneous change. Instantaneous separation from sin. Instantaneous surrender unto the Lord. Can you tell the hour? Can you tell the day? I can. I can. I can tell you the day and the time. And I can tell you the decision I made. And I came to the Lord. You must be able to do that. Like the Levites, you are not born into Christianity. You are not born into salvation. It takes a decisive moment. A decision of your mind that to say, I come, I repent, 
I turn and I give my heart unto the Lord. If you have not done that yet, this is the good day and the best day you can do that, starting the year with the Lord. And it says the Levi, the sons of Levi, gathered themselves together unto him. Then in verse 29, verse 29, for Moses had said, consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. When you give your life to the Lord, you consecrate yourself to the Lord. You say, I've come to the Lord, I'll never go back. I've come to the Lord and I will follow the Lord for the rest of my life. That's what Peter did. That's what John did. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they came out and they came unto him and they believed him. That's what Andrew did. And that is what James did. Everyone, they came out and they came in. They came into the kingdom of God by repentance and following after the Lord. And when you do that, you have a commitment that forever Ever and ever you're going to keep on following the Lord you consecrate yourself you lay everything on the altar for the Lord your life your past your present your future everything you lay on the altar and forever you are committed to following after the Lord and it says then there will be blessings that will come upon your life here is something very important look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 17, and I'm reading from verse 18 in Deuteronomy chapter 17 reading from verse 18 and it shall be when he that is the king that they will appoint over them when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. The Levites actually kept the word, the law of God, written in the book of the law. And they kept that. And if the king was to reign over Israel, he'll go to the Levites, he'll get a copy of the book of the law and write out for himself. The point is, the Levites were custodians of the law of God, of the word of God. And we too today, we are the possessors of the watch of God, the proclaimers of the word of God. And we do not allow any judge, any teacher to fall down from the word of God. A Christ-like Levite will have the word of God, possess the word of God, proclaim the word of God, and live by the word of God, practice the word of God. The calling of the Levites out of the congregation. Look at number two here. Number two here is the consecration of Levites against corruption. The consecration of Levites against contamination. And remember, there are examples for us that as we are called to repentance, we had corruption in the past, contamination in the past, defilement in the past, sin, iniquity in the past, since we came out and we said we disagree with all the corruption of the land, the corruption in the office, the corruption in the community, the corruption in the nation, the corruption anywhere and everywhere. We single out ourselves and we say that our consecration commitment makes us to be opposed to the corruption in the land. And we will not do any of the corrupting things that we do anywhere in the land. And of course, we'll not carry the corruption and the contamination into our own Christian homes, into the church of the living God. We remain converted, 
and clean and consecrated to the Lord. That's how the Levites were supposed to do it, and that is how we too were supposed to live the life. In Exodus chapter 32, I'm reading here from verse 7. Exodus chapter 32, verse 7, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. The people in general, they have corrupted themselves. That's why Moses called out the people and said, Who is on the Lord's side? If you're on the Lord's side, you'll come out of corruption. If you're on the Lord's side, you'll consecrate yourself against the corruption of the land. If you are on the Lord's side, corruption will not have any part in your life at all. He said, the people that you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, and they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and they have worshipped it, and, have, uh, and they have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, that's why, look at verse 26 again, uh, that's why Moses stood in the gate of the camp. He will not go into their midst. He will not join himself unto them. This is the man that had been with God. The presence of God was with him. The power of God was with him. And purity, purity like no other person in Israel, in Israel was pure. That purity of the Lord, he was conscious of that inside and outside, inwardly and, uh, and outwardly. He was conscious of that purity, the purity that had no stain, the purity that had no spot, the purity that was pure through and through, and he will not go into the midst of the, of the corrupted children of Israel. And now he stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side, let him come unto me and that's what we do when the lord has purified you and purged you they can come unto you but you don't go unto them they can come to be like you you don't go in to be like them you don't join them you don't act like them you don't behave like them if you have been saved if you have been converted if you have come out from among them you are separate and you're not going to go in unto them again but they can come to you when they repent they can come to you when they are saved when their lives are turned around and changed they come unto you and then we're told and the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him the Lord does not want us to join the corruption of the people or the corruption of the land. In fact, it tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, reading from verse 3, but I fear lest by any means that the sap as a serpent uh, beguiled, deceived Eve through the through his subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. When corruption comes, it comes in the mind first. Then it comes in the spirit. It comes in the soul. Corruption comes and influences people internally and then the corruption will appear in their language out of the abundance of the heart out of the corruption of the heart the mouth speaketh and the corruption will show in their appearance will show in their dressing they are half dressing that will want to corrupt other people and lure other people into sin and into evil but it starts in the mind and it says if we children of 
God, we are converted, we're born again, we're separated from all those Levites, and then we do not allow corruption to enter into our mind. Who brings the corruption in the mind? Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, For such a false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. In verse 14, it says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Verse 15, verse 15 says, Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, he calls them, they call themselves apostles in verse 13, but here the Spirit of God through Paul the Apostle says they are the ministers of Satan. Anyone that corrupts the minds of other people, anyone that corrupts the lives of other people, anyone that corrupts, uh, you know, the standing of other people, they may say they are ministers, they may say they are apostles, they are the ministers of Satan. It says, and also be transformed to the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Number one is the calling, is the conversion. Number two is the consecration. Number three now. Number three is the conservation of Levites in constant conviction. There are people that change their convictions from year to year. There are people that change their convictions from place to place. When they are in the wilderness, uh, there's a way they have conviction. When they get to the other side of the wilderness, there's a way they, when they roam, there's a way they act. When they are in another place, there's another way that they act. But you know, a Levite is a Levite. Anywhere, anytime, any year, every year. A Levite is a Levite in the sight of the Lord, by the calling of the Lord in any city, in any country, anywhere you find yourself, anywhere you travel to, you carry your conviction along. If you're a real river, Levite, if you have been saved and born again, if you are committed and yielded to the Lord, anywhere you find yourself, you carry your conviction everywhere. When you're with your family, believing family, conviction when you are with an unbelieving family, conviction. When you are going through rough roads, conviction. When you are going through smooth path, conviction. When you travel overseas, conviction. When you stay in our country here, conviction. Anywhere you find yourself, if you're a Christian Levite, a Christ-like Levite, and you're converted and yielded to the Lord, you retain that same constant conviction everywhere you go. The conservation of Levites in constant conviction. And we're told in uh, First Chronicles chapter 29. In First Chronicles chapter 29, I'm reading here from verse 5. Look at verse 5. It says, and that's the gold for the things of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and of all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers, and who then is willing, who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord. You see, when you come to the Lord, and you give yourself to the Lord, and you lay everything on the altar, and you bind that sacrifice with cord on the horns of the altar, as years roll in and roll out, you keep that commitment, consecration, you keep that on the altar of the Lord. That's what the Levites were, were expected to do. And they went through the wilderness, all the, all the commitment they had, and they will, not com they will not compare themselves to the people of the land. They said, I came. I, 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 
submitted myself I surrendered myself and I consecrated myself to the Lord and they moved on and they have to shift the tabernacle and they have to move from place to place and when they got to the land of promise the consecration continued their conviction continued and some of the because you know they were to be Levites from the age of 20 to the age of 50 some of them Levites before they got married after they got married they kept that same calling that same conviction the same thing with us do you have any conviction have you any decision have you any commitment to the word of God? Have you responded to the call of God? And you say, this is how I will live. And this is what I commit my life to. And this word and this doctrine is what I believe. And I live by that. If you were converted before you got married, you consecrated before you got married, you had conviction before you got married, after the marriage, the conviction goes on. You maintain the same conviction before your children. You add conviction. After that, after having children, you remain in that same conviction before you became full-time worker in the vineyard of the Lord. You had conviction after becoming a full-time worker, a full-time minister. You remain in that conviction to serve the Lord in righteousness and holiness transparently in the in the private in the public all the days of your life you see the people that are real Levites of the Lord and real followers of the Lord that the people that have conviction and they keep that conviction in persecution in peace and any time they have that constant conviction unto the Lord and, and uh, you know look at uh, look at um, Psalm 118 and I'm reading here now from verse 27 Psalm 118 verse 27 God is the Lord which has showed us light by the sacrifice what cuts even unto the hands of the altar by the sacrifice unto the house of the altar it's like abraham when he sacrificed those uh, uh, birds to the lord and then other birds of prey wanted to come and take the sacrifice he drove them away make sure you're watching over your life you're watching over your consecration you're watching over your conviction and you say when i came to the lord five years ago ten years ago twenty years ago fifty years ago when I came to the Lord here is like a Christ like Levite the commitment I made and the conviction I had and I put that on the altar the Lord absolutely surrendered unto the Lord nothing taken away after 50 or 60 years of following the Lord those are the real Christ like Levites and you want to make sure that you reaffirm the consecration today and you uh, you give over again the conviction again today like Daniel wherever you go you go to Babylon you go anywhere you say here is this I will not defile myself what I wasn't eating back in Judah I will not eat in Babylon what I wasn't doing in Judah I will not do in Babylon and what I wasn't getting involved with all the shady practices and you know the shady kind of life I wasn't doing that in Judah I'll not do it in Babylon you keep your conviction you keep your consecration you keep your absolute surrender completely constant and consistent and the Lord will bless you in Jesus name amen, amen. We're looking at point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at the cleansing of committed Levites. You see, Levites were not people that did wishy-washy service. Levites were not people that are up and down, up and down, undependable, unstable, unreliable. No, they were committed Levites and 
crucified Christians and crucified Christians. Nehemiah chapter 13, we're reading from verse 29. Nehemiah chapter 13, looking at verse 29, remember them, oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood, the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, thus cleansed I them from all strangers and appointed the words of the priests and the Levites, everyone in his business. In Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 20, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, the crucified Christians. Those, those are the real Levites in the kingdom of God today. And those are the Christ-like Levites that follow the Lord every step of the way. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. From the moment Paul the apostle came to the Lord and he responded to the call of God, he became crucified with Christ. And not only at that beginning, continually, every moment of his life, continually, all the days of me, continually, until he breathes his last breath, I am crucified with Christ. A real child of God, a real Levite in covenant relationship with the Lord will say the same thing. The flesh is always crucified. And all the parts of, or the different parts of his life is always crucified. And he lives a crucified life. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth, present tense, liveth continually, liveth in me. That is the committed labor. That is the crucified Christian. Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God consistently, not spasmodically, and it's not occasionally, consistently, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This point number two, that the cleansing of committed Levites cruc and crucified Christians. Three things we're looking at. Look at number one here, genuine conversion and cleansing of the inner life. When we say we're Levites unto the Lord, we're converted by the Lord, we're, we're yielded to the Lord, it starts with the inner life. It doesn't start from the outside, it starts from the inside. Number two, generative commitment and cleaving to the invisible Lord. Generative, generating a righteous life, generating inspiration and inspiring others that they will be like God has made us. Generative commitment and cleaving to the invisible Lord. Number three, the generous contribution of our time, of our resources, of our lives we're totally giving to the lord and we don't grudge the lord anytime in anything we have to give we're generous as we contribute to the progress of the kingdom of god we're generous as we contribute to the expansion of the kingdom of god we're generous as we contribute our treasures and the things that are very important essential to us we contribute everything to the work of the lord Lord, generous contribution and clean and cleaning with increasing love. We're coming to number one. Number one is genuine conversion and cleansing of the inner life. Look at Matthew chapter Matthew chapter twenty-three. I'm reading from verse twenty-six. Thou blind Pharisee. 
place first that which is within the cup and the platter that the outside of them may be clean also. Yes, he wants out outward cleanliness, but he begins with the inward life, the inner life. And he said the Pharisees were hypocrites because they were good and correct outwardly. But inwardly, they were not so good. And the same thing he says about us. If we're following the Lord, and if we're real Levites unto the Lord, he wants us to cleanse that which is on the inside. Our thoughts, our mind, our disposition, our inner life. He wants that washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. God hates hypocrisy. Christ hates hypocrisy. And if anybody is in the kingdom of God and his life is based on hypocritical acts, he acts the way a Christian, a believer, ought to act. But inwardly, it's not a real Christian, trustworthy, transparent, honest. Christ hates that and instead of bringing blessing to such people he says woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto whited sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful outward when you look at some christians all they have to show is what they have on the outside it's what they put on in the clothing, they wear the badge of identification with the people of the kingdom. It's only something outward. But the Lord wants us to go beyond the beautiful exterior. But a within full of dead men's bones and a fall of cleanness. Verse 28. In verse 28, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity this new year change will come Amen. we're beautiful on the inside in our thoughts in our mind in our attitude, in our conduct, character, on the inside, everything cleansed and washed by the blood of the Lamb. And you're not doing anything superficially, anything hypocritically. What you are on the inside, the holiness that starts on the inside, the purity that starts on the inside, and the genuineness that starts on the inside, you're carried out outwardly in Jesus' name. A well-dressed soul, a well-dressed heart, a well-dressed spirit. After that, a well-dressed body outside. It tells us in First John chapter 1, it tells us in verse 5. In First John chapter 1 verse 5, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Verse 6, in verse 6 it says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we we'll lie and do not the truth. If we say I'm a Christian, I'm converted. If we say I am high, I am deep, I am deeper, and yet we we'll walk in darkness, we we'll live in darkness, and we do not live according to the pattern of the doctrine the Lord has taught us, because we don't have that in the heart. But outwardly, we're living with like you know my Christianity. All of your Christianity is carried on your body, exterior. 
but there's nothing within to support the outward life. He said, we lie and do not the truth. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, but if we walk in the light, and hypocrites, don't, they don't walk in the light. They have a lot to hide, a lot to cover. They have a lot to shield away from the onlookers. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. A fellowship with one another shall not be based on hypocrisy, on hide and seek. A fellowship with one another which should not be based on, you know, darkness and light and inconsistency and instability. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. In Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. This new year, let love be without hypocrisy. Let love be without pretense. Let love be, let not love be with a deception. But it says, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. In verse 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it of the washing of water by the word, the cleansing, the washing by the word it says in verse 27 verse 27 that he might present the church to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy it sat on the inside and without blemish look at number two here number two here we're looking at generative commitment, a kind of commitment you make, a kind of commitment you demonstrate, a kind of commitment you exhibit that generates the attention, the same consecration in other people. If you're a parent, a kind of commitment, consecration you make that generates the same uh, desire in the lives of your children, daddy and mommy, internally transparently they're so committed to the lord and i want to be like daddy like mommy a kind of a commitment you have as a worker that makes members to say to come to you how can i be a worker i like the way you do the work of god your heart is there your mind is there your life is there and it generates desire in the hearts of other people they want to be like you the way you walk in the office and the way you are committed and the way you are honest and the way you are loyal makes other workers in that place they should they go to church and they should they have their denomination but they look at should they know that you're a man of conviction, a woman of conviction, and you do what you do sacrificially, and they come to you and they say, I know you go to them, they mention your church, I'd like to go with you, because your commitment has generated within me a desire that I want to be like that too. If your life is not like that in this new year, you want to, you know, bring other people to the Lord, you want to bring them to commitment by the kind of life you live a generative commitment and cleaving to the invisible lord it tells us in deuteronomy chapter 13 reading from verse 1 it says if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder in verse 2 it says and the wonder and the sign of the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them verse 3 in verse 3 thou shalt not hearken on the words of that prophet or of that dreamer of 
dreams there are many prophets especially you know at the beginning of the year from the end of the previous year to the beginning of the year they come up prophecy 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 and like i said before in the past years the public generally they're so gullible they do not understand because all the prophecies of you know the past years where are they where is the fulfillment and everybody wants to come with a prophecy and, and the individuals that abandon the word of god and they follow and they run after prophecies that will even shift them away from the word of god it says that shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the lord your god proves you tests you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Look at verse, uh, verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Cleave unto him unto him you're glued to him and nothing nothing of the things that go around will shift you away from your conviction because you are cleaving unto them that's what he wants for us that's what he desires for every one of us he tells us in hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 27 hebrews chapter 11 verse 27 by faith they forsook egypt not fearing the wrath of the king. Why don't we cling to the Lord? We fear the wrath of people. We fear the wrath of people. We fear the chastisement of people. We fear the reactions of people against our lives. So we lose our feet. We cannot stand firm. Because the fear of the wrath of men cripples us. That we cannot stand on our feet. Why can't we cleave to the Lord? I know this is right. I know this is the way. And I'm committed to walking in that way. The reason we cannot you know, walk in that way. And the reason we cannot cleave to the Lord. We're surrounded by people in our offices, in our community, in our extended family. We're surrounded, we're surrounded with people that will not sign approve of her conviction can you blame them they have not been to the lord they have not heard the same word of god that you have heard they have not drunk of this river of life and they have not eaten this bread of life with you they have not listened they have not heard they have not prayed and they do not have the christian experience you have because of that they cannot just say i support you i approve of what you are doing they cannot approve they will not approve and because they'll not approve and they frown at us and they say listen to me are you not my son listen to me are you not my daughter listen to me are you not my junior brother my junior sister listen to me are you not my you know the same parents with me this is not right that's what he thinks that's what she thinks what does he know? What does she know? Does he know the conviction that came from heaven? No. But Moses heard God. Pharaoh did not hear God. The magicians did not hear God. The Egyptians and all those people did not hear God. But Moses heard from God. And so this man had commitment. Generative commitment that generated decision, that generated a kind of pursuit and passion from the lives of other people because he was cleaving to the Lord as a person that saw the invisible Lord. It says, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, and endured as seeing him who is invisible. Endured, cleaving to the Lord, as seeing him who is invisible. When you go to your office any day, every day this year, 
would you act and behave as seeing the invisible rather than seeing you know the people around you rather than seeing their frowns rather than seeing their action rather than seeing their reaction but every time you act and you live as if you see the invisible actually is there is there God is always there. Emmanuel is always there. He watches everything we do. He hears every conversation we, you know, participate in. He even sees the thoughts of our heart. And he says, man, man looketh on the outward expression, but God looketh on the heart. You live your life this year as seen as one seeing the invisible. You'll hear noise, you'll see sights that dazzle. But if you look at what you see and what you hear and what is earthly, you will not keep any conviction, but you go beyond what you see, you go beyond what you hear, and you look at the invisible and you cleave unto him that's how to live a committed life the commitment that will not waver the commitment that will not change cleaving to look at number three here number three here is the generous contribution and cleaning within with increasing love cleaning up with increasing love. You won't allow any litter, you won't allow any unsightly thing in the sanctuary of the Lord, in the temple of the Lord. You'll not say, hey, that, that's not my area. <laughs> Which one is your area? Your area is to worship in a dirty, in a dirty sanctuary. Which is your area? Your area is, I'm not, you know, I'm not assigned to do that. And therefore, even when, even if all those unclean things are there and just to you know avoid them and pass by and then serve the Lord what kind of Levite would you be and what kind of a Christian would you be that you say well, that's the sanctuary of the Lord that's the temple of the Lord and that is the tabernacle of the Lord I see the ditch there I see those things there I see those people there misbehaving they're almost committing fornication adultery in the very house of God but I'm not that's not my assignment they might do whatever they want to do there was my business my business is to do this and do that nothing more you're not a sincere person actually you are afraid to confront the fornicators that's your problem you are afraid to confront the adulterers that, that's a real problem but the contribution we make of our time of our treasure the contribution we make to make the children of God and the house of God move forward and do better things it has no limit generous with your time generous with your treasure generous with everything you do everything you contribute and we're looking at second uh, chronicles chapter 29 i'm reading from verse 5 it says and said unto them hear me ye levites thank god after so many years the levites were still hackney they were still hearing they were not deaf to the word of God. They were not deaf to the requirement of God. Hear ye, me, ye Levite, sanctify now yourselves. I was sanctified yesterday. Show it by the life you live today. Demonstrate it by the behavior you carry out today. I was sanctified 10 years ago uh, let's let's leave history let's come to the story of today now as you look at your life and welcome to this new year and uh, you know that you do what sanctified people 
don't do. You live in a way sanctified people don't live. And, and you get, you interact with things and with people that really sanctified people will not get involved today. Why don't you come this new year? Why don't you come at this new opportunity? Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers. In the house of God should be as clean as your heart is. And your heart should be as clean as the house of God is. There's no defilement in your heart. There's no defilement in the house of God. And whatever will not be allowed in the house of God will not be allowed in your heart. It says, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth and take away the filthiness out of the holy place. Take away the filthiness out of the holy place. You see the tabernacle of the Lord in Israel had an outer court. It had an inner court and then it had the most holy place. And one, two, three, outer court, your outward expression of life. You take every filthiness away from that and then the holy place, your mind, your soul, you take away every filthiness from that and then your heart, your spirit, your inner man, you take filthiness away. It says, and carry forth and take away the filthiness out of the holy place. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, we're told, for our, for our fathers have transgressed has trespassed and done that which is evil in the eyes of the Lord our God. Uh, do you realize that? You don't just do everything our fathers handed over unto us. It's like, you know, I know the uh, people God used for me as fathers in the Lord. And they handed over to me. Not just, they're not perfect to me, I was in the church. And, uh, you know, they preached and they handed over everything to us. And I accepted and I received. And, you know, I received exactly as they read from the word. And I just swallowed everything. And, you know, a few times, some of the people, the same people, that told me, this is the way, walk here, there, in. I can picture, I can see the picture now, where we were, they were finished the service, and this is a person that I prayed in a fiery way, in a wonderful way, and I prayed and prayed and soaked in everything, he, he saw me at the car park, we were about to go out of the car park, and he said, you know, uh, mentioned my name, he said, you carry this thing too far. I said, sir, tell me what I'm carrying too far. He said, this, this, and this. And thank God I had, you know, a return team. I said, sir, this is what you preached at this time. I mentioned the time. I mentioned the subject. I said, this is what you preached. He said, that's on the pulpit. I'm telling you. I said, no, sir. What I hear on the pulpit, final. Any other thing? You know, if we don't have the boldness to tell them that our fathers, when they're kind of digressing and when they're going away, when they're diverting us and diverting themselves away from what they had done before, what they had said before, if we don't have the courage and the presence of mind to say no, this is what you preach and this that's where i'm standing and when i reminded him of what he preached and i quoted him and i said what you are telling me here this one is not under inspiration that one you said over there on the pulpit that is with 
inspiration. He kept quiet. He couldn't say anything. You know, what to understand? Sometimes fathers and mothers and elders and people, they may kind of deviate from what they had prayed before, but we stand and it says, for fathers have transgressed, have trespassed and done that which is evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and they are forsaking him and they have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves. That's what we were told in verse 5. And immediately they were not deliberating, they were not doubting, they were not disputing, they were not arguing. They gathered themselves, their brethren, and they sanctified themselves and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. Look at verse 16. In verse 16 it says, and the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it. That's where the cleansing should begin. The inner part of the temple of God. The inner part of your life. The inner part in your heart. That's where the cleansing begins. To cleanse it and they brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord and the Levites and the Levites and the Levites took it and car to carry it abroad on into the book Kidron. It tells us um, that we're to continue that generous contribution of our time, contribution of our treasure, contribution of our expertise, what we know to do, and we do it the way it ought to be done. And we do it in love. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, reading from verse 9, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9, but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Ye yourselves are taught of God. When you are taught by God, it's like, you know, we, we've been to school, and I remember uh, one of my lecturers, he became later the Minister of Education, Commissioner of Education in his state. And, I was and he was inspecting schools, and he got a particular school, and uh, even though he specialized in maths, but, you know, uh, they were teaching chemistry. And he saw the way the teacher was teaching, he said, excuse me, uh, give me that, uh, you know, something. And then he went on the board to teach that same lesson. And those people know, they knew that's a master a master in that subject and when God himself teaches us we have taught you and you know other leaders and teachers have taught you but when God teaches you that you love one another the love is so deep in your heart it's not superficial it's not hypocritical. It's not, you know, just outward. From the depth of your heart, in all sincerity, when you are taught of God to love one another as he has taught us, then you practice age very well without any of these superficial things. Then in verse 10, in verse 10, and indeed, he do it towards all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more 
and more. He's telling all that this new year will increase more and more. We we increase in love, we increase in our contribution, we increase in our consecration, we increase in our dedication, we increase in our absolute surrender unto the Lord. We don't say good are the old days, those days we gave to the Lord, good at the present days, that this present day we give our life, we give everything in total submission, surrender, unto the Lord and we do it more and more with increasing love welcome to point number three now point number three we're looking at our consistency with Christ-like loyalty our consistency with Christ-like loyalty no matter what we do however deep however high if there's no loyalty there it doesn't have any recognition in heaven no matter what we do, the whole of uh, the city or the church or the country may praise us, may even give us a word. But if there's really no loyalty there, it's not recognized by God. Everybody may say, that brother, that sister, he serves a lot, he contributes a lot, but... If there's no loyalty there, no honesty there, no transparency there, it does not have any value, any weight in the sight of God. Consistency with Christ-like loyalty and commendable cooperation cooperation that you co cooperate with each other John chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 29 John chapter 8 Verse 29, and he that sent me is with me. That the consciousness of the presence of God who sent us every time. That's what makes us loyal. That's what makes us honest. That's what makes us transparent. That's what makes us devoted because we know that like Christ knew. He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone for I do do always those things that please him i do always not superficially because superficial service does not please god not for i service because people are looking at me i must say the right thing and do the right thing and i must not you know act in any way that why is he doing that? why is she doing that not because of them but because the Father that sent me is always with me, everywhere, anywhere, because I do always do things that please Him, that the reason we're consistent with Christ like loyalty and commendable cooperation. It says in Bastachi, in Bastachi, as he spake these words, many believed on Him. Bastachi 1. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. We're looking at three things here. Number one, our commission to labor for the Lord. Number two, our cooperation in loyalty to the Lord. Number three, our concentration in love for the Lord. Number one is our commission to labor for the Lord. Our commission to labor for the Lord. In Luke chapter 19, reading from verse 10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Morning, afternoon, and evening, month after month, year after year, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And what the Lord did all the time is to find out where the sinners were and to go to them and to reach out to them and to get them saved might be an individual might be a family might be a whole community he knew the reason why he came and the reason why he still lived on earth and the time he lived on earth is to seek 
and to save that which was lost that never left his mind that never left his view that never left his attention and if we are following after the Lord exact the same commission he has given unto us we are to seek and we are to save that which was lost in verse 13 in verse 13 it tells us and he called the ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them occupy till I come don't leave the service occupy till I come don't say you are tired occupy till I come don't say you want to retire occupy till I come as long as there are lost sinners to be saved occupy till I come as long as the backsliders to restore occupy till I come as long as the saved souls to be sanctified occupy till I come as long as there are sick people to be healed occupy till I come as long as there are converts to follow up occupy till I come he wants us to keep on doing the work and to labor for the Lord to make sure that people who are not in the kingdom yet are brought into the kingdom John chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 34 in John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me always conscious about the one that sent him the people that say well I know the work I ought to be doing in the church and I know the souls have to be winning but I don't like what so and so said so and so did not send you Jesus did not say I don't like what Judas is currently planning I don't like the way Peter spoke and said that will not happen to you I don't like the way James and John after these many years they're still saying can we call them fire and destroy them after I told them that I'm to seek and to save that which was lost, they want to call down fire. I don't like that, therefore, I stop. No, no. If you are really committed to the Lord, if you are called by the Lord, if you know as a Levite you are separated unto the Lord, what they do, what they say, how they act, and you know, the way you know, some things come upon you should not affect you. Jesus said, My meat my passion, my drive, the thing that drives me from this, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Look at verse 35. In verse 35, say not ye that yet for months then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Verse 36, in verse 36 and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together verse 37 in verse 37 and herein is that saying true one soweth and another reaper, verse 38, it says, I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. All the men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I read from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I endure. By the grace of God, I serve. By the grace of God, I'm committed. By the grace of God, I'm consecrated. By the grace of God, I leave everything in the hands of God. Absolutely surrendered unto the Lord. All by grace. For by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which is, which was with me. That same grace will be upon your life. 
Look at verse 58. In verse 58, it says, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as she know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor will not be in vain. Hypocritical labor will be in vain. Shallow labor will be in vain. Superficial labor will be in vain. Deceptive labor will be in vain. Unscriptural labor will be in vain. But those who with loyalty, with transparency, those who with a pure life, a clean life, they labor for the Lord, your labor will not be in vain in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two here. Number two is our cooperation in loyalty to the Lord. Our cooperation, our unity, our oneness together, serving the Lord together. It tells us in John chapter 17, reading from verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. And then it tells us in verse 21, in verse 21, it says that they all may be what? Sanctify them that they all may be one. Sanctify them that they all may think in the same direction, go in the same direction, walk in the same way. Sanctify them that they may be one as thou Father art in me and I in thee. No argument between the Father and the Son. No disputation, no debate between the Father and the Son. What we're doing in this new year should be without a kind of a deception, without debate, and without disputation that they may be one as thou Father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that they also all the believers all the members all the ministers that they all may be one in us the same decision and as we say this is the direction to go we all agree that the direction to go this is what to do we all agree that the way to go we all cooperate we're not tearing apart we're not causing discord in the house of God we're not going different direction that they all may be one as thou art and thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Look at verse 23. In verse 23 it says, I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Philippians chapter 2 and I'm reading here from verse 2. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, that ye be like-minded, my heart like your heart, your heart like my heart, our hearts like that sanctified heart that submissive heart, that yielded heart, that were like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, let nothing be done through strife of inglory. Let nothing in our families, in our church, in the ministry, let nothing, whatever, small thing, big thing, open thing, public thing, private thing, let nothing be done through strife of vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, look not every man 
on his own things, on his own advantage. You know, the Levites, they were not, you know, so divided. This one looking on his own thing, and this one looking on her own thing, and they having different interests because of the different parts of the tabernacle they were to carry. No, it says, look not every man on his own things, on his own side, on his own tribe, but every man also on the things of others. How the other person will succeed. How the other person will make progress. You are, we're cooperating together, in loyalty together. Verse 5, in verse 5, let this mind be in you. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Let the mind of love be in you. Let the mind of unity and cooperation be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we're looking at verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, reading from verse 10. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that ye all teach the same doctrine, that ye all uh, communicate the same thing of the same value, and that there be no divisions among you, but that she be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. We're looking at number three there. Number three here, we're looking at a concentration in love for the Lord. What you concentrate on? What we focus on as we make covenant with the Lord and come into this covenant relationship deeper and higher than it was ever, we concentrate in love for the Lord, in love for the Lord. We're not looking for, I need this, I want this, I want to get that, I want to get that. Our concentration is what brings our love to focus. It tells us in John chapter 21, verse 15. John chapter 21, verse 15. So when they are dying, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon. Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these, more than these pieces of fish? Lovest thou me more, more than natural progress, more than professional success? Lovest thou me more than this, more than these, more than material blessing, more than human uh, kind of uh, blessing, enrichment. Lovest thou me more than these, more than everything you've got from the Lord, more than children, more than houses, more than land, more than everything you've got, lovest thou me more than these? How do you prove that you love God more than these? You can give up those things if God requires you to give them up in the service of the Lord. More than your time, more than your treasure, more than the things you are running after. Lovest thou me more than these? He doesn't want our lives to be totally filled with material things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. And when God has added all those things unto you, he's still asking, Yes, I've added this, I've added this, I've added that, but lovest thou me more than these in this new year? What are you serving there? Lord for, are you serving uh, the Lord for pieces of fish? Are you serving the Lord for material things? Are you serving the Lord for give me this, give me this and give me that? Do you love God more than all those things? So then when they are dying, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, yea, Lord, yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, feed my lambs. Now, 
If after that feed my lambs, Peter still went gathering together all the fish and going to the market and abandoning the lambs of Christ, he would not have proved what is said by the life he lived. If we, this new year, if we run after the same thing we've been running after all these many years and we abandon the lambs and we abandon the children of God and we abandon the church of God and we abandon our sincere service unto the Lord, we will be proving that really we love all those things more than, more than we love the Lord. It says in verse 16, in verse 16, it says unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? No comparison now with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Lovest thou me? Lovest thou me in time until death in eternity? Lovest thou me? No qualification and no condition. Lovest thou me unconditionally? Whether I do this for you, I do that for you. I don't do this, I don't do that. Do you love me unconditionally? Then that's what the Lord is asking you. Lovest thou me can you say that this new year unconditionally absolutely completely whatever rain may be falling whatever sun may be shining whatever may be on the street whatever may be on the road whatever may come out in the news whatever uh, the, you know the economy would you say that this new year whatever comes whatever goes lovest thou me you love him he says unto him ye lord thou knowest that i love thee he says unto him Feed my sheep. Do you have well with that? You feed the sheep. Do you have the mind, the intention, the resources with which you feed the sheep? Uh, you'll get them. You'll get your heart them. You will labor to have them if you really love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. If you love him unconditionally. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, he says unto him, the third time. Will the Lord be asking you two times, three times? Will the Lord be asking you five times, seven times? Will the Lord be asking you so many times, wanting to really get the depth of your heart? In this new year, what are you running after? What are you seeking after? What are you passionate about? Maybe he's asking you three times over, five times over, seven times over, because he knows that, you know, here you are. All you want is, uh, once again, uh, all the blessings he has given you have not not even, even giving time to thank him and to praise him. You healed me, you blessed me, you provided for me, you gave me a job, you gave me a family, you gave me children, all that you did last year. You have not even been thanking him. You have come again, give me, give me, give me. Lovest thou me more than yourself? More than the gifts I give you? More than all the things you yourself with? Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? Peter, uh, don't be great. You know Jesus now. He remembers at the most important time when he needed your support. When he needed that you are cooperating with him and you're praying along with him. You disappointed him. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Three times. Peter, don't be grieved. You did more than that against the Lord. And so he's asking you now the third time. Lovest thou me? We should not be grieved. He's preaching the same thing unto us. I had that before. Yes, I had that before. But did I obey? Did I do? Did I give my love unreservedly, unconditionally, absolutely unto him? Don't be great. He's asking us again. 
It's preaching the same thing again. It's demanding of the same thing of us again. Are you going to deal with this message like you've done with every other message? You're here, it goes in one ear and goes out the other ear and nothing ever changes by anything he tells us. That's why he's asking the third time, and the fifth time, and the seventh time, and the eleventh time, and the twelfth time that he's asking, Lovest thou me? And he says unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Now, that I love thee. Peter, you know, we're going to prove that by the action. The action that follows the utterance. I love thee, I love thee, I love thee. Okay, show it by feeding my sheep. This new year, let's prove our love to the Lord, our loyalty to the Lord. Let us prove unto the Lord by how we feed the sheep, how we feed on the scriptures ourselves, that we love him more than anything and everything on earth. We we'll love him. I said we will love him. I said we will love him. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and show the Lord that we understand the calling of the Levite. Let's show to the Lord we understand the conversion of the Levite, the consecration of the Levite, the total absolute surrender of the Levite unto the Lord. Uh, why don't you come before the Lord, look at your life, and if there's any way you have disappointed the Lord by the life you've been living, if there's any way you have uh, not really given yourself to the Lord in true conversion, commitment, consecration, let's come to the Lord and say, Lord, all the past I repent of, all the shallowness of the past, all the superficiality of the past, all the hypocrisy of the past, I repent. All the deception of the past, I repent. All the hypocrisy of the past, I repent. And all the corruption of the past, I repent. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. All to Jesus, I surrender. But to him I freely, fully give. I would ever love and trust him. Forever love and trust him. You're not coming only for bread and butter. You're going beyond the material blessing. You also want to give yourself unconditionally and reservedly unto the Lord. The Levites knew the day of their conversion, the day of their commitment and consecration. Make this the day you have not been born again. You may come in and come in. Outwardly, you might have changed your dressing. Outwardly, you may be talking like us, acting like us, appearing like us. But inwardly, you know. Privately, you know. Your conversion is in doubt. Calm. Whatever sin is in your life, repent and give your heart unto the Lord. Do it today. Do it now. 
except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Repent of every form of sin in your life. Call on him. Sin will not enter heaven. My serve outwardly like a Levite. There is sin in your life, sin in your heart, sin in your character, sin in your conduct, sin in your behavior. Sin will not enter heaven. Repent and say, Lord, I give myself to you. Let no man deceive you and don't deceive yourself. Outward conformity to the Christian life is different from inward conversion. A real believer, converted, consecrated to the Lord, will not join the corruption of the world. Pray. Ask Him to forgive. Ask Him to cleanse. Ask him to make you righteous by faith anywhere, everywhere you find yourself. Do it today. Tomorrow may be too late. It's appointed unto men wants to die. And after this, the judgment. Secure forgiveness, salvation, righteousness in his presence right now. What it is called today. Come out from among them like the Levites came out. And be separate, says the Lord. Be separated from sin, from corruption, from carnality, from worldliness. Let him kill you from hypocrisy, wash you, cleanse you, purge you. For me, hypocrisy. Let him have you serve with honesty and transparency. Genuine conversion that you can tell. Genuine conversion that others can tell. Genuine conversion that your character that follows will tell. Loving Him with all your heart or your soul all your mind with all your time with all your treasure pledge your strength to labor for him
pledge oneness, unity in his body, in his church. Don't be a tool of conflict, of disunity among the Levites in the church of the living God. Don't use your tongue like a sword that divides, that kills, that cuts. Cooperation with loyalty. Concentrate on love. Don't concentrate on having your way. Don't concentrate on worldly practice. The world is not saved. You cannot practice what they practice and live the way they live and still get to heaven. Pledge total, complete, pure, purifying love unto the Lord. Lovest thou me in this new year? Lovest thou Christ more than material blessing? More than fish? More than bread and butter? More than external material things? Lovest thou him? Show by the prayer you pray. Show by the commitment, consecration you make. Lovest thou him? Show by the seriousness of your Christian profession. Loving, unconditionally loving, unreservedly loving, Love him by loving to be in his presence. Love him passionately. Practically. Love him. Love him more, more than ever before. Love him.
more than you ever did in your life loving love him selflessly love him seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness then it says all these things shall be added unto you but don't love the additional things more than you love him let him still be the king on the throne of your heart let him still have the first place in your heart in your life in your desires and whatever blessings you have, love him more than all those material blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. A happy amen. amen. Father, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate everything you've done we appreciate our salvation we appreciate it. the greatest thing we can have for a man to be forgiven for a woman to be forgiven for a person to be forgiven and saved and his name in the book of life in heaven on his way on her way to heaven is the greatest blessing we can have we appreciate we love and we're grateful for our salvation in jesus name for a change of heart, for transformation of heart, and for a new heart, and for you taking away the stony heart out of our heart and giving us a heart of flesh, a new nature, sanctified nature, that you give us the grace and the ability to have that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Lord, accept our praises in Jesus' name. For the possibility of the power in the Holy Ghost That we shall receive power After that the Holy Ghost has come upon us And there will be the fire and the passion and the flame Of the Holy Ghost burning within us Thank you Lord, thank you Lord Accept our praises in Jesus name For you to call us into the ministry of present-day Christ-like Levites and for us to contribute anything that will mean the salvation of the lost and that will prepare people for heaven that our mouth can so be endowed with the word of eternal life that we will speak and sinners will repent and sinners will come into the kingdom and sinners will be saved and through us, through us, through us you can bring people into the kingdom and prepare people for the rapture what a great honor you have given us to be the present day Christ like Levites accept our praises in Jesus name and when you send you also give resources for your servants that you send where your servants where your children where your sons and where your daughters we have committed ourselves in an irrevocable, irreversible consecration to serve you to the end of our lives. We are praying you will bless the consecration of all your people in Jesus' name. And when you send, you equip your people. You bless your people. If we are sick and sickly and weak and you know fainting, how can we do your work properly? How can we do your work to the extent you want us to do it? Because of that, you have given us promises in your word, and your promises bring healing to our lives.
Your promises bring your prosperity to our lives. Your promises bring joy and happiness, abundance into our lives. We are asking, O oh Lord, all the abundance of Scripture that you have promised everyone shower upon your people in Jesus' name. This year, this year, from this very day, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the sick say, I am Let the poor say, I am Lord, we pray, all the sick, the water that had gone under the bridge of suffering, of sickness, of poverty, of joblessness, all that will not come back in this new year in Jesus' name. The Egyptians were left behind. They will not follow us after the sea of baptism. We cross over, they will not cross over with us. They will not touch us again. They will not torment us again. They will not reach us again in Jesus' name. Were we weak last year? No weakness this year. Were we sick last year? No sickness this year. Were the adversaries pursuing us, overpowering us last year? They will not overpower us this year. The power you're giving us to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy will receive that power right now. We will operate in that power this new year in Jesus' name. Lord, did you say nothing shall by any means hurt us? Then the year of fulfillment. As we go out, nothing shall hurt us. I will come in, nothing will hurt us. As we travel by air, as we travel by road, as we travel by sea, as we go anywhere in the midst of any group of people, nothing will hurt us in Jesus' name. Blessing upon everyone. Amen. Upon you. Amen. As you go out. Amen. amen. As you come in. Amen. As you ride triumphantly in life. I pray abundance of blessings will be upon you in Jesus' name. And all the Levites of the Lord, our pastors, our overseers, region or state or national, our ministers, our preachers, our teachers, our singers, our musicians, our ushers, our security, everyone. Lord, I pray special blessing upon everyone this year in Jesus' name. Your enemies will envy you. Your unconsecrated uh, community people, neighbors, they will envy you. But their envy will not take away from your blessing. Your, their envy will motivate them to come and learn from you and so that they will also have the blessing of the Lord in Jesus name blessings upon your life overflowing blessings upon your life overwhelming blessings upon your life every prayer you have prayed every request you have made everything you have asked and beyond what you have asked the Lord grant unto everyone in Jesus name and the grace to live the power to live the strength 
to live the life that is pleasing unto the Lord all through this year, every moment and every day, the Lord grant unto you. Yeah. You will not lack. Yeah. As I will not lack. Yeah. You will not lack as I will not lack. Yeah. The Lord will be your supplier. The Lord will be your supporter. The Lord will be your shepherd. And everything you need this year for yourself, for your wife, for your husband, for your children, for your parents, for everyone, for fellow members of the church, the Lord grant unto you and grant unto us in Jesus' name. Higher. 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 Everyone, you'll fly in Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. The face of the Lord shine upon you. The miracle you never saw before from the from this day, from this year, unprecedented miracles in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our lives will praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy New Year. Prosperous New Year. And higher New Year in Jesus' name. You will soar like an eagle. Thank you, God bless you.